in working with matrices, there will be a lot of applications in solving systems of equations and other types of application solving processes where we'll use matrices and having a background of the arithmetic of matrices will get us the foundation we need to carry out some of the processes. In this video, we're going to look at matrix multiplication when we're multiplying two matrices. In a previous video, I went over how to add or subtract or multiply by a scalar. These all together will give us the foundation we need to then go forth and solve application problems or solve systems of equations using matrices. Now here is the definition of matrix multiplication and then also the criteria that we need in order to actually carry out the multiplication. Not all pairs of matrices can be multiplied. There are specific conditions that have to be met with the dimensions of the matrices in order to actually have that matrix multiplication be defined. So let A be an M by N matrix and B be an N by P matrix. Then the product, the multiplication of A times B is another matrix C and it's an M by P matrix where each entry in that answer to the product, small k c sub i j, is the sum of the products of the entries of the i row of A and the j row of B. So when we say out what we're doing with matrix multiplication, it starts to get really confusing. And that's why examples are um, what I wanna do right away in this to be able to let you see what's being discussed in that multiplication definition. Now notice in the definition, whenever we give a dimension of a matrix, it's the number of rows by the number of columns. So this first matrix that is on the left of the multiplication, that's an M by N matrix. And the second matrix is an N by P matrix. So these have to match. The number of columns of the matrix on the left has to match the number of rows on the matrix of the right in order for the multiplication to even be defined. And then if you do have those inside numbers matching, then the number of rows of the first matrix is the number of rows in your answer, and the number of columns of the second matrix is the number of columns in your, in your answer. So let's go right to an example. So here I don't have an operation in between these matrices, so it's assumed to be multiplication and it's a matrix times a matrix. They could put a raised dot there to show you matrix multiplication, but it's not necessary for that to be there. Now the first thing we always need to do is to verify that the dimensions are the right dimensions for the di multiplication even to be defined. So remember dimensions is number of rows by number of columns. So you count horizontally first. So there's one, two by one, two, three. So this is a two by three matrix. Now the second matrix that it's being multiplied to is a three rows by three columns. So that's a three by three matrix. So these inside numbers, the number of columns of the first matrix has to match the number of rows of the second matrix. So these have to match in order for the multiplication to be defined and the outside numbers give you the dimension of the answer. So this product can be done and its answer is a two by three. So I'm just gonna set up an empty two by three matrix. I'm gonna put little slots where the answer entries are going to go um, so we can focus on them as we go. So two rows, three columns. I'm gonna have slots that are two rows and three columns. So we have those spaces that we're gonna to try to fill in with the multiplication. Okay, now how do we get the numbers in each spot? Well, that's what's this little C sub I J. So what we're gonna do is we have to make our left hand go right and make our right hand go down. So that's what they mean by the I throw in the jth column. So for the entry that's sitting in this first row, first column of the answer, I take the first row of the left matrix times the first column of the um, right matrix. 
So the naming of the row and the column that the entry sits in in your answer is actually the row and the column you use to get that. So I'm going to put my left hand at the beginning of the first row and my right hand at the top of the first column. And what you do is you multiply these together, plus move both hands, multiply those together, plus move both hands, multiply those together. And when you get the answer of the sum of those products, that's what number goes in the entry. So for my first row, first column entry, so I'm going to take for this answer C sub 1, 1. I'm going to take the first row times the first column. So go 1 times 4 is 4, plus move both. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, plus move both. 3 times 8 is 24. So when I take 4 plus a negative 18, that's negative 14, and negative 14 plus 24 is 10. So that first entry is 10. Okay, now let's go to this entry. So that entry is in the first row and it's the second column over. So that entry is the first row, second column. I can do that by writing a one for the first row and a two for the second column. So when we subscript it like this with matrix entries, um, that's the row and the column. So I don't say that C sub 12, I say that C sub one, two. C sub first row second column, and you don't put parentheses, but um, or sorry, you don't put uh, a comma between it because it's just by convention we know that that's what it's referring to when we talk about an entry in a matrix. All right, so we're going to take the first row of the right or left matrix times the second column of the right matrix. Start at the beginning of the row, the top of the column. You multiply plus move, multiply plus move, multiply. Okay, so we have 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 plus move. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus move. 3 times 6 is 18. So negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5 plus 18 is 13. Okay, now the next entry in that top row. That's the first row, third column. So that's C sub 1, 3. And we're going to take the first row times the third column. So start at the beginning of the row, the top of the column. So this gives me 1 times 5 is 5, plus move. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8, plus move. Negative 3 times, sorry, positive 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So I have 5 plus 8 plus negative 6. So when we work that through, that's 5 plus 8 is 13, plus negative 6 is 7. All right, now for the entry that's in the second row, first column, I'm going to take the second row of the left matrix times the first column of the right matrix. So I have C sub second row, first column, C sub 2, 1. So we're going to get 16 plus 63 plus 8. So 16 plus 63 plus 8. That gives me 16 plus 63 is 79 plus 8 is 87. Okay, next up is second row, second column. So that's C sub 2, 2. So I have my second row, second column. Start at the beginning of each. So that'll be negative 4 plus 14 plus 6. So negative 4 plus 14 plus 6. So negative 4 plus 14 is 10 plus 6 is 16. And then for C sub 2, 3, second row, third column, second row, third column. So that's 20 plus negative 28 plus negative 2. So 20 plus negative 28 plus negative 2. So 20 plus negative 28 is negative 8 plus negative 2 is negative 10. So this matrix is the product 
of those two matrices. Let's go over to the next um, example. So here I'm taking the three by three matrix times the, remember it's rows by columns. So for this matrix on the right, you're going to count horizontally. So that's one, two, three rows by vertically one column. So to multiply, those inside numbers have to match, which they do. And the outside numbers give you the dimension of the answer. So my answer is a three by one. So I need three rows, one column. So I'm gonna make the slots where my answer is going to go. And then for the entry in the first row, first column, so C sub one, one for this example, I take the first row times the first column. So remember, start at the beginning of the row and the top of the column, that'll give me five plus negative one times um, negative four is a positive four. So five plus four plus 12. So 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 12 is 21. Now for the second row first column, C sub 2, 1, I take the second row times the first column. Remember, these subscripts tell you which row of the left matrix times which row um, column of the right matrix. So we're going to have 10 plus negative 7 plus 36. And so that gives me 10 plus negative 7 is 3, 3 plus 36 is 39. And then C sub 3, 1 is the third row times the first column. So it's going to be negative 5 plus negative 5 plus 8. So I get negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10 and negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. So um, with these, when we give our final solution, you don't want to have those slots underneath so that you don't make it look like possibly there's fractions when there aren't or anything like that. Those slots underneath were just so you could see what the spacing was and what we needed to do when we filled in the um, entries within the product of the matrices. Now, one last thing I want to remember, or remind you of is that multiplication of matrices is not commutative. So remember with just numbers, with real numbers, it didn't matter which way I did the order of the multiplication, I would still get the same answer, and that was called the, the commutative property of multiplication of numbers. But that's not true for matrices. You have to multiply them the way it was written or the way that a process tells you to multiply them in a solution. Um, because if you change the order, you're not guaranteed to even be able to uh, multiply them in the other order. Even if you can multiply them, you're not guaranteed to get the same answer with the two different orderings. So always make sure that you write it in the order with the multiplication that it has in the setup of the problem or the setup of the process.